When you read the writing of most music critics or other music scholars, it seems that they're all trying to make the case that any rock music made after the death of John Lennon is somehow of a lesser standard or otherwise inferior. This is nothing but pure musical snobbery, and I'm gonna prove it right now. One of the biggest arguments that I hear is that rock music after the death of John Lennon just isn't good. So let's take a look at groups like, I don't know, the Rolling Stones and The Who. When you strip their music down, they were basically playing blues-based rock and roll with an edge that attracted the youth of that era. And last time I checked, bands like Guns N' Roses and Pearl Jam pretty much played blues-based rock and roll that had an edge that attracted the youth of their era. Within this argument, people often say, this guy's trying to be the next Jimi Hendrix or he's trying to be the next Jim Morrison. That's not only wrong, it's actually impossible. When you look at someone like Hendrix or Morrison or any of the other demigods of music, the fact of the matter is they became became who they were because of the influences they had growing up. When you think about it, new artists probably don't have those same influences, plus Jim Morrison is one of their influences. So when you take that, it's a different combination. There's no way they can possibly turn out the same way. Another commonly used idea to slight the rock bands of the 80s and later is that they rely heavily on technology. The fact of the matter is, whether it was the Beatles or Pink Floyd or any other band from that golden age of rock and roll, they were always looking to use the latest technology to get the most out of their recording. Strangely enough, over the past few years, a lot of rock bands have been doing the exact opposite, going back to four track recorders or even more rudimentary systems to try and get a more authentic and more honest feel. But perhaps the most outrageous and outright pompous argument that rock snobs try and get away with all the time is that the post-Lennon rock world lacks singers who bring about soul and there's no message in the music. Really? Really? Are you gonna try and tell me that you're not moved by voices like Lane Staley or Michael Stipe or Beth Gibbons? Really? And when it comes to having a message in your music, I understand those bands from the late 60s and early 70s were talking about what was going on. They were bringing the news to the youth around the world. So tell me something. How is that any different from what Rage Against the Machine or Fugazi have done during their careers? Oh, and for those of you who like to say that the lyrics of today's music is too vulgar, it's just too dirty, why don't we go look at Led Zeppelin's The Lemon Song, or you can talk about the meaning behind the Allman Brothers' One Way Out. Finally, to those who claim that the art within music has gone, Go and check out the Flaming Lips. Go out and check Fish. Tell me how they express the idea of art in every single sense of the word isn't as good or better as it was back in the day. In the end, those who try and degrade the quality or downplay the importance of the rock scene of the last 30 years are nothing more than uninformed, closed-minded musical snobs. So honestly, get over yourself. Hey!